by Buick and your Buick dealer. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. By the financial professionals at Payne Weber. And by Unisys. Better information, better decision. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Michigan Replay. The Wolverines defeat Minnesota in the battle for the brown jug, 22-7. And on Saturday, the conditions in Ann Arbor were absolutely awful. <laughs> it was amazing that uh, that game even finished up, Bo, because uh, I don't believe I remember a game that was played in The only one kind of that uh, was similar to that was back in the uh, 70s at Michigan State when uh, it rained so hard we couldn't even see the players on the field. But uh, this game, it, it rained, uh, you know, about 24 hours before the game. And it rained right through that game, Jim, I promise you that. Under those circumstances, a win is really all you, you, you want to get the win, and that's about all you can really get out of that game, isn't it? Well, two things happened there. Uh, first of all, the loss of Michael Taylor in the first play, uh, which is a great blow to our team, and to Michael because he was having a great year and, and doing a great job leading our team. And then for that to happen the first play and then be in that kind of conditions, and then we lost one of our best linemen on the first drive in Mike Kusar. Um, it started to seem like uh, <laughs> we're going to have to battle to win this one, and that's what we had to do. And it was done because of the condition and everything out, pretty much on the ground as Demetrius Brown came into the game for Michael Taylor. Right. Well, you know, as you look at the screen, it doesn't look bad, but you got to understand the field is soaking wet, the ball's wet, their hands are wet, and it's continuing to rain, you know. So. Uh, we went pretty much to the running game. Uh, here at Tony Fumbles, uh, this was our only fumble of the day, and fortunately, Demetrius picked it up and ran for first down. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, we stuck pretty much to the ground, Jim, and I don't think that was bad strategy, really. Uh, you almost um, had to under those situations. I think so. You could throw the ball, but sooner or later, you're going to drop some because it's wet. You're going to throw some badly, and you're going to have some picked off. And you went at him, it appeared, between the tackles more than anything. Right. The only thing that was discouraging is that we didn't put it in the end zone more. Now, here's our first field goal to go ahead three to nothing, and that was our very first drive. Um, that's the thing that's uh, disappointing. Defensively, again, this team continues to improve. Trip Wellborn picks out one off here, and again, it uh, right. really is what you've been looking for all season, the defense to make big plays. As a strong safety, as a youngster, usually at the uh, right place at the right time. And uh, I think that's his fourth interception this year. He's uh, done a great job for us. And that put us down in there close. And I think we picked up a first down or two. And then once again, Jim, we got stalled. And uh, Mike kicked the field goal again to put us up six to nothing. I felt, and so did the uh, coaches, that uh, as long as we were moving the football and getting down in there, we better come away with some kind of points, not take any chances on going on fourth down and uh, not getting some points. Here they fumbled the ball, which was a great break for us again. Uh, we got the ball in their territory. We had it on the interception. Now we get it on the kickoff fumble. Special teams really very emotional after that fumble. They wanted to get one, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's big when they do it. you got to understand, those are all young guys. They're red shirt freshmen and young guys, and they, uh, you know, they have a lot of pride in that team. Here, Mike uh, kicks another field goal for to go up 9 to nothing. Uh, just before the half. And again, in those situations, with the circumstances, with the weather being what they are, you're going to take the points when you can get them. Take the points. Don't, uh, not in weather like this. Uh, here, the short pass uh, to their fine back, Thompson, and, and uh, this play hurt us uh, that they put in new. We hadn't seen it before. It was a shovel off of a fake draw to the Thompson, and the fullback came underneath, almost like a middle screen. And uh, they worked it a couple times on us and did real well. They get a first down inside the 10. This is just before the half, and then the defense right. again makes there's the big play. There's 14 seconds left here, and there's a big play by the defense here. Uh, Feta Murray makes a great hit on him there, as you can see. Fumbles the ball, and we get the football. And so uh, that really hurt them because had they gotten on the board going in 9-7, to seven, and she was really going to be a dogfight, but as it was, 9 to nothing was a little more comfortable. <laughs> we talk about the weather taking a little bit away from what. How much of the offense did it take away, do you think? Well, I think you were um, a little nervous about putting the ball up on early downs. You were a little nervous about putting it up uh, deep in your own territory. Um, we threw um, actually 14 times for the day, 13 with Demetrius, and uh, got significant yardage, really, uh, that helped us a lot. But 
uh, basically, it was not a passing day. <laughs> Demetrius Brown, of course, coming in for the injured Michael Taylor at a good second half. Don't go away. We'll be back and look at the second half highlights of the battle for the jug right after we hear these words. I'm not certain that the rain had a lot to do with, you know, how much, I mean, change. I don't think there was any change at all. You know, I think we stuck, stuck with the game plan that we had worked on all week and stuff. It's just unfortunate that Mike happened to be hurt. I was a little nervous, a little cold, you know, and stuff like that, but I overcame it. Eighty-nine percent of CEOs surveyed believe their companies are too short-term oriented. You need a computer company that really knows your business to plan for the long term. Call Unisys. Better information, better decisions. The great football battles between Michigan and Ohio State can now be enjoyed on home video. It's the 10-year war. Relive these games with coaching legends Bo Schembechler and Woody Hayes. That Ohio State defense was something special. Their offense couldn't move across the street. They were trying to psych one another. Sure, he's not above that, nor am I. <laughs> you get highlights of the games between 1969 and 78 with comments from Bo and Woody for just $32.95. Call 1-800-356-2820 for your copy of the 10-year war. One-on-one -on -one discussion with one of Payne Weber's top executives. What about CDs in today's market? Are they a good idea? We're talking with Joe Grano, president of retail sales and marketing at Payne Weber. Joe. We believe that in today's market, CDs are a very appropriate investment. And so much so that we're offering an exciting rebate program. Tell me how this rebate works. Well, if a client purchases a three-month CD through Payne Weber, we not only will provide the competitive yield, we also are going to take the profits that we make as a firm and give it back to the customer. Well, if Paint Weber's not making a profit on these, why are you doing it? We're doing it because, one, it's in the customer's best interest. Secondly, we are encouraging our customers to sit down with us and understand that even savings are an investment, and all CDs are not created equal. And are these CDs insured? All CDs are insured, yes. How can the investor get more details? By simply calling a Payne Weber investment executive. Thank you, Joe. And goodbye for now from Payne Weber. More than 50% of all business PCs don't communicate. If your computers could talk, you'd get information that makes a competitive difference. Call Unisys. Better information, better decisions. I don't have a lot of experience, and a lot of the guys don't know how I can play. You know, going out there and being able to play with confidence and be able to know what I'm doing all the time. You know, just, you know, get, get the guys to have confidence in me, too. You just go out there, man, and within the defense, just fly around, making plays, big hits, make sure it's inside the defense, and just, just having some fun. Well, the defense had some fun in the first half, keeping Minnesota off the scoreboard 9 nothing. But you had to come out in the second half and kind of wonder, okay, how do we get this thing in the end zone? Well, the first thing I wondered in the uh, second half is, should I accept the opportunity to receive the kickoff? Because the weather was so bad, maybe we'd have been better off to kick the ball off. So I told that offense, we'll take the ball. But uh, we're in those conditions, and the wind in our face, we'd better be moving it. And they did. And again, they did it on the ground first. But I think the biggest problem was you couldn't really stick it in. And that, again, is one no, of the big concerns. That's been our trouble right there. Uh, here, Tony Bowles breaks off. I thought Tony played a uh, very strong game again. Uh, got a lot of yardage, and we ran him a lot. Here's Bunch up the middle. The fullbacks helped us uh, quite a bit up the middle. And again, uh, between the tackles where you're doing most of your damage against right. this team, the weather really didn't right. allow you to go wide. Well, we, we did a couple times on the sweep, and were fairly successful, but truth of the matter is we ran off tackling up the middle. But once again, we're stalled, and we're down in here close. Now, this is a situation where you could go after it, but... Uh, under the circumstances, I think it was better to get points on the board. And again, the defense, your defense had to be giving you confidence to go for the three points right. because they were playing well. They were playing well, and as long as we didn't give them field position, we were in good shape. Here's a great punt return by Johnny Colasar all the way down to the 30. Um, the last uh, two or three games, uh, John's really gotten aggressive with his returns and has done a great job for us. And here's your only touchdown of the day. This is it. Uh, Round to uh, McMurtry for the touchdown. He's wide open, and uh, Demetrius laid it in there, and um, that was a big play because that put the game. They, they had two 15-yard penalties in a row, and we had a perfect onside kick. The ball went up in the air, 
And wouldn't you know it came down in the arms of a Minnesota player. <laughs> now here, I don't know whether this is a mistake or not. I don't think we hit him hard enough for a 15-yard penalty. I would have accepted a five-yard bump, but he gave us a 15-yard penalty. And, and that really and automatic first down. Yeah, and that and now really, we're in trouble. And that really is the only reason they were able to get in the end zone. That's on exactly you. right. You yeah. had them stopped. That's right. And they hit these two passes over the middle um, that gave them um, uh, about 30 yards, along with that penalty. Now they're down in our 25-yard line. Um, that might have been a mistake to go after that kick because I could have had the ball at midfield and put this game out of reach. But uh, we went after the punt. And um, so that hurt us. Well, in this situation, though, you got to figure, well, be aggressive on your special teams. Be aggressive. You might get something, make something happen now, big. There's that darn shovel pass again that <laughs> uh, picked up some decent yardage. And here on third down, they sneaked it in and got it. At least the official said they sneaked it in. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, it made it 19 7, right. but it's fourth quarter. Game pretty much over. Yeah. They tried the onside they kick. They tried it, and actually, the, the ball ended up not going 10 yards, and they touched it before we did. And uh, I don't know, they waited a long time and unpiled them. They didn't need to do that. That was our goal. Here's our shovel uh, to Leroy Hoyd, who did a great job and went for a first down for us. It's a little different shovel pass than what they gave you. Right. It's a little different uh, variety. Here uh, on a rollout, uh, Demetrius um, uh, hits McMurtry uh, with a first down. But once again, we get stalled down there and go for the field goal. This is the fifth one, I believe, Jim and sets a Michigan record uh, uh, for Mike Gillette. Five field goals in one game. And ties a Big Ten record. So uh, Mike Gillette, at the beginning of the season, you said he might be our most valuable player. Well, in this one today, he was. Well, he certainly has been. And you know, he hasn't missed a kick since the Wake Forest game. And uh, in my judgment, of all the guys in the United States of America, I want kicking for him. It's Mike Gillette. And uh, coming out of this game with a 22-7 win, it's always good to get the victory, which is important. It keeps you online for the Big Ten Championship, but the injury is a problem. Michael Taylor, Mike Kusar, Mark Ramirez, and J.J. Grant, all of them uh, went down and had to be helped off the field today. So, really, you're thin now. Well, we really don't know about that, Jim. Let's, we're going to test this trainer of ours, uh, <laughs> Russ Miller. See what he's made out of. <laughs> and uh, we won't, uh, you know, we won't really know until uh, midweek how we're going to be injury-wise. But uh, frankly, it doesn't look good. But uh, on the other hand, it's a challenge, you know. Uh, we're in a position to win this conference championship. We're a little banged up. There'll be somebody out there playing every position with a Michigan uniform on. And we expect that Michigan player to produce like a championship player. I suspect they will because you sound like you're going to make sure that they do, even <laughs> if uh, they may have other ideas. Don't go away. Coming up next on Michigan Replay, we'll talk with the tradition makers. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. You should make those uh, field goals. Those are like extra points, you know. Distance-wise, they're all inside 30 yards, except for one, I think, was 34. So it wasn't really that a difficult a task. The wind kind of played havoc, and the, and the cold weather played a little havoc on my foot. That last field just about broke my foot. I was so cool. That means I've had a lot of opportunities more than the other kicker. You know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful the bowl gave me the opportunity to play football here. Uh, you know, I've... Uh, I don't believe I remember a game that was played in The only one kind of that uh, was similar to that was back in the uh, 70s at Michigan State. When uh, it rained so hard, we couldn't even see the players on the field. But uh, this game, it, it rained, uh, you know, about 24 hours before the game, and it rained right through that game, Jim, I promise you that. Under those circumstances, a win is really all you, you, you want to get the win, and that's about all you can really get out of that game, isn't it? Well, two things happened there. Uh, first of all, the loss of Michael Taylor. By Buick and your Buick dealer, the Great American Road belongs to Buick by the financial professionals at Payne Weber. And by Unisys, better information, better decision. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Michigan Replay. The Wolverines defeat Minnesota in the battle for the brown jug, 22 to seven. And on Saturday, the conditions in Ann Arbor were absolutely awful. <laughs> it was amazing that uh, that game even finished up, Bo, because the throw the ball, but sooner or later, you're gonna drop some because it's wet, you're gonna throw some badly and you're going to have some picked off. And you went at him, it appeared, between the tackles more than anything. Right. The only thing that was discouraging is that we didn't put it in the end zone more. Now, here's our first field goal to go ahead three to nothing, and that was our very first drive. 
Um, that's the thing that's uh, disappointing. Defensively, again, this team continues to improve. Trip Wellborn picks out one off here, and again, it uh, right. really is what you've been looking for, Taylor. Right. Well, you know, as you look at the screen, it doesn't look bad, but you got to understand the field is soaking wet, the ball's wet, their hands are wet, and it's continuing to rain, you know. So uh, we went pretty much to the running game. Uh, here at Tony Fumbles, uh, this was our only fumble of the day, and fortunately, Demetrius picked it up and ran for first down. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh, yeah, we stuck pretty much to the ground, Jim, and I don't think that was bad strategy, really. Uh, you almost um, had to under those situations. I think so. You could learn the first play, uh, which is a great blow to our team, and to Michael, because he was having a great year and, and doing a great job leading our team. And then for that to happen, the first play, and then be in that kind of conditions. And then we lost one of our best linemen on the first drive in Mike Kusar. Um, it started to seem like uh, we're going to have to battle to win this one, and that's what we had to do. And it was done because of the condition to everything out. Pretty much on the ground as Demetrius Brown came into the game for Michael Thomas.